Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video and I hope you are all doing well. Now I know it's been a while since I last uploaded, but the reason is I haven't really been doing much flying. Some of you may know I've actually recently started my tight rating on the Airbus A320. And in today's video, I'm gonna be bringing you through a week in the life of a tight rating student. So you guys can get behind the scenes of what some of you may be doing in the future, or if you're just curious about what us pilots have to do before we can fly the commercial planes, I'll give you the insights. First up, what is a tight rating? Every plane is different. So I'm doing my tight rating on the A320. If I was to fly a 737 or any plane that is not an A320, you have to do a different type rating for it. So most pilots only have one type rating for one aircraft, which is what they fly for their airline. They won't fly any other aircraft unless they switch airline or switch onto a different aircraft in the airline. Now, typically the type rating starts with ground school. I've already completed all of this. You have a series of lessons and a lot of self-study really. Then that all finishes with some exams at the end of the ground school period. Once a ground school's done, it's onto the fun part, the simulators, which is what I'm in the current process of doing. After all your simulators are done, you have a, of course, a very intense simulator test at the end. It's about five hours long. You get every failure you could possibly imagine, some of which you'll probably never encounter in your whole aviation career. And then once all the sims are done, you have base training, which is one flight, six touch and goes in the 8020 of course without passengers and you have to do these six touch and goes as a sort of a box to make sure you're safe to land the aircraft and take it off obviously that's done with a base training captain someone who's very experienced but you complete all of that once base training is done you'll be starting flying passengers what is known as line training and hopefully i'll be able to update you with more info of all of that as i continue my journey in my training but for now i'm doing the type rating on the a320 and as i mentioned i'm going to be showing you a week of what my simulator training is like. Now I have already started a lot of it and I'm going to give you a brief rundown of what my schedule has been like so far. We started with three days on and each day you have a simulator. That's a four hour simulator with an hour and a half briefing beforehand and an hour debrief after. So we had three days on to start off the course followed by a day off and three more days on. Quite an intense start to be honest. It was a lot of hard work but I really enjoyed it so far. I then luckily had three days off, which was brilliant. I mean, I needed a day off to rest, but unfortunately the other two were pretty much filled with revision. And that's where I'm at now, and today is my last day off. Tomorrow I'll be back in the sim for two days of simulators in a row, followed by two days off, and then four days on. Now I'm trying to bring you guys on a seven day cycle, so I'll bring you along for the next seven days. Now at the moment, I'm currently in Stockholm, Sweden, and that's where I'll be doing the majority of my simulated training. We've got two days on, two days off, and then four days on, just to make it seven days. I'll only film for three of those days, so you can sort of see what a general week is like. But as you'll see, there's lots of simulators, lots of studying. The revision is not much fun, but the simulators definitely make up for it. They are such good fun, especially if you're in a full motion AT20 it feels so incredible it honestly feels like you're in the real aircraft you guys will see i won't be able to film much inside the simulators themselves of course it's a lesson for the airline so i can't really do much there but i will be able to film all around my day and also brief you and debrief you for each simulator now i'm not too sure if there's too much more to say i think that's covered everything so tomorrow i have my first simulator and i don't think we're briefing until 5 30 p.m jumping in the simulator at 7 finishing at 11 and then debrief it can generally be under an hour so hopefully finish by 11 30 latest midnight so we're going to start this video properly tomorrow morning for day one for a week in the life of a tight rating student we've got quite an interesting sim tomorrow but i'll tell you all about that in the morning anyway it's quite late so i'm finished my revision for the day i'm going to go get some sleep i'll see you in the morning so guys welcome to day one in a very chilly sweden now it's about 10 25 in the morning so not too late not too early i got up at about 9 a.m and you might be thinking oh that's actually quite early or quite late but the reason for that is we have a really late sim today and i didn't want to have too long in bed because otherwise i'm tired the whole day if i have a long lie in but at the same time i didn't want to get up too early because otherwise i would be shattered for the sim just to fill you in all i've done so far pretty much started to the, the day got ready like normal, had some quick breakfast, and then pretty much chatted to my sim partner slash roommate about 
what our plan is for today, what we're going to revise, and basically just talking over some of the procedures that we're going to be doing in tonight's sim, just to make sure we're on the same page and we both interpret them the same way. So it's just really important to make sure you're on the same page just to get the sims off underway and heading in the right direction. Now that discussion is pretty much done, it's time to get cracking with the revision, so let's do this. So guys, as I mentioned, mainly today just focusing on revision, which is what you can see me doing here, going on my crew iPad and basically just looking over new procedures in the FCOM, um, all different techniques and different procedures we're going to be doing today. Once I had that all completed and I felt like I had a good understanding of everything, we moved on to the mass and balance and uh, loading stuff which we have to do for the flight today as well as the performance. And in each flight uh, towards the beginning stages we also had discussion items stuff that we wouldn't be actually physically doing in the sim but stuff we had to go over and talk about just in case it would happen and today's was bombs on board so a bit of an interesting topic but that was the plan then went downstairs had a coffee had some water got some lunch made some lunch which was good and then it was time to chill before the sim watch some of uh, the golf netflix show if uh, full swing i don't know if any of you have seen that but highly recommend if you like golf and then uh, just continue with some revision made some notes for the sim and that's where we are now so briefing completed my instructor's right behind me but briefing's done about to hop into the sim let's go do it so guys, first half of the sim is done. I was pilot monitoring for the first half. So now time to be pilot flying. Um, we had some really good fun to, uh, on that last flight. Dual engine failures in the cruise, which are pretty cool. As uh, well as some like uh, airspeed indications, faulty and stuff like that. So pretty good fun. It was interesting. But uh, yeah, now my turn to fly. I mean, this thing is just so cool as well. Look at that. Let's get it. So welcome to day two of this week in the life of a tight rating student. I'm currently outside in Sweden. I don't know if that's a good idea because it is freezing, it's like freezing, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go with it anyway. So a little update on the sim yesterday. Obviously I can't record any of the sims. I guess that's a given, but I'm just gonna give you an update. So we did our hour and a half briefing before the sim, uh, talked about what we're gonna do in the, in the sim as well as a couple extra bits and bobs. And once that hour and a half briefing was finished, it was time to head in the sim, which is four hours long. So you do two hours as pilot monitoring, and then you switch to pilot flying for two hours, or vice versa, you take turns every sim to be pilot flying first. But the sim went really well. We got really good feedback. Uh, we started off after takeoff, we had an engine fire, uh, which was pretty interesting, but nothing too crazy to deal with. Uh, then after we dealt with that, we went up to flight level 380, had a single engine failure and started drifting down because you can't stay at that flight level with just one engine uh, but you can stay at an, a, a lower flight level so as we were drifting down though we had a second engine failure a slightly bigger problem had to really sully it well. and then luckily that one of the engines restarted so it wasn't a problem and then obviously you have to land as soon as possible and then after the dual engine failure, we had a couple failures, like an FMGC failure. I'm not really going to go too much into detail. It's not that exciting. And then a dual radio altimeter failure. Um, again, all that means is I don't want to go into too much complicated talk. But for those of you who understand an Airbus, essentially, if you have a dual radio altimeter failure, you stay in normal law. But then when you put the gear down, you're going to go into direct law. So then you have to do a direct landing. We did a non-precision approach as well, which was pretty fun. But that was the main bulk of the sim yesterday. I don't think I missed anything else. Oh yeah, and then we did another takeoff uh, where we had a, a no speed indication, which can obviously be a really big problem because you don't know if you're going to overspeed or stall. So yeah, that's a big problem. So we had to deal with that one as well. But a quick rundown of today. We actually have the simulator at the exact same time in the evening. So briefing 5.30 and then hopping in the sim at 7 p.m. for uh, four hours. But until then, it is the standard. We got to revise for the simulator. I read over it briefly, and today it seems like it's a full flight from A to B um, with a few failures along the way. Looking into some one engine landings and approaches as well, as well as a one engine go around, which we haven't done yet in the sims. So that's all new stuff uh, for the AK20. So yeah, really not doing much today a lot of revision for the sim this evening uh, the standard stuff so 
I'm going to head inside because my ears feel like they are going to fall off and uh, start preparing for this sim. I'll let you know how it goes. Now, I just got back in from recording that last little bit. And I forgot to mention so far that I'm currently in the training centre building um, and above me is my apartment. So it, we got super lucky with that um, because we don't have to go far. When we have simulators, we don't have to get any transport. We literally just walk downstairs to the simulator building, which is really cool. But the best thing about living at the simulator centre is all the free coffee we can have just at our disposal. Trust me, when you're revising this many hours a day, very much needed. So I'm gonna have a quick coffee and get to revision. So guys started off today by doing the mass and balance and performance. I thought I'd get that out of the way nice and early and then straight into the FCOM to read over the different flows and procedures that we were doing today. And finished off by reading over the one engine landing stuff which we'll be covering today. And I believe it's new to me as well, so yeah finished by reading over that okay so after a morning of some pretty productive revision i've come back downstairs to grab myself another coffee because you know it's free why not revision's going good I'm gonna have some lunch now because i am starving yeah have a little bit of a break i think yeah it is important to have breaks the stuff we're doing today most of it we've also done before as well the only main new stuff is some one engine approaches landings and go arounds or one engine but it's not too different to the normal uh, normal approaches and landings there are a few differences so as long as i've learned those i think i should be good and then we've got some other stuff which i've pretty much covered so yeah just gonna keep on revising after i have a little break and keep it going so guys preparation all done for the sim made some notes on a little piece of paper just uh, as a little reminder for stuff like briefings and stuff and important tips for the flight read over all the new stuff we're going to do today and i'm pretty confident i know it all as well as all the stuff we're going over in the briefing but yeah just going to relax until now might take a nap because we do have quite a late sim so probably have a little nap and then yeah time to head to the sim well first the briefing and then the sim but yeah i'll see you then so guys, started my briefing in about 10 minutes. Got a hot chocolate because, again, why not? Uh, but yeah, briefing in 10 minutes. So yeah, then into the sim. Be a good one, hopefully. So guys, briefing completed. We're going from cold and dark today from the very, uh, you know, start of an aircraft like a normal day. Um, this is going to be a hard sim for sure, but we'll see how it goes. I'll try to update you later, but if not, I'll update you tomorrow. So first half of the sim done, I was pilot flying first. That was by hard, by far the hardest sim yet. Uh, I'll give you a big debrief tomorrow, but now time for a quick break and on to flight number two. So guys, it is now day three here in Stockholm. Still not getting any warmer, believe it or not. Still lots of snow on the ground, but yeah, we're doing good. So yesterday's sim, it went really well. Again, finished around 11 p.m. It was probably the hardest one yet. And on paper, it didn't actually look too bad. When we were actually in the sim, we did some really challenging stuff, which I didn't think was going to be too hard. In hindsight, we didn't do too badly. We did do well, but we did make a couple hiccups here and there. But considering it was our eighth time in the simulator, you know, you can't can't be too harsh on ourselves but yeah all in all it went pretty well started off with a takeoff and we only had to do an engine fire but the instructor thought we could deal with that fine so he also gave us an engine failure and you're like well what's the difference and the main difference is is if the engine just catches on fire and doesn't fail you're still getting a lot of thrust from it and it's still producing power however if it's a failure you're not getting any power from it if it's a fire and a failure that is a worse problem than if it is just a fire just because the aircraft then if you can imagine it's sort of yours a lot because one engine is producing more power then we did a non-precision approach with one engine followed by a go around on one engine climb back up went back into the hold then did an ILS on and then a one engine landing which all went very well um yeah in hindsight we didn't actually do too bad but in the moment it felt like it was all going to pieces but you know at the end of the day you are having a lot of failures so it's not going to go completely smoothly and then we repositioned after landing back onto the takeoff point we did a takeoff uh, when we retracted the flaps they got locked so we couldn't retract the flap which obviously causes loads of problems the biggest being as soon as that happens your aircraft wants to speed up on takeoff you can't go too fast with the flaps out so basically they were locked and you have to set the speed and make sure you don't overspeed. And then obviously you're coming in on landing and you don't have all the flaps out. So your pitch is really high. It's really hard not to get a tail strike if you're heavy. Um, but luckily we weren't too heavy, so uh, it wasn't too bad. 
So yeah, that was the whole of the sim. I was pilot flying first and I think I did a well and um, then went on to pilot monitoring. I think I did okay on that as well. So all in all, really good sim yesterday. And now today, so it's my third day on. So meaning I've got a day off today and tomorrow. Um, looking at the next sim, there's not too much challenging stuff. Um, so I'm actually gonna have a day off today, which I feel like I need. I am really exhausted after the last couple of days. So I am gonna have a complete day off. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna show you guys. It's not really gonna be that interesting. I don't know if you know, but there's this thing called the Jumbo Stay Hotel, which is nearby where I'm staying. It's essentially a 747 that's been turned into a hotel. I think like the suite is the cockpit. And then you can also stay in the engines. The engines, obviously they're not real engines, but where the engines would normally be they've turned into rooms so i might go walk over there and have a look and just see what that's like but apart from that i'm probably just going to stay inside watch some football and just relax all day i don't know if you can see it there but that's basically it it's quite far away i'm climbing to zoom in but uh yeah let's go take a walk and see if we can find it so guys it's cold but we have made it to the jumbo state this thing looks awesome i don't know how close i'm able to get but uh we're gonna head up now see how close we can get and i'll try have a peek inside for you guys so yeah made it here um it looks really cool i don't know if i'd want to stay in it i mean it's cool to look at from the outside but i'll be honest i don't think it's going to be too comfortable but i don't know uh but yeah it's freezing cold so i'm gonna head back so guys it's now the evening i don't want to be too loud but um pretty much i've done nothing all day watched kelsey lose which was brilliant and uh, watched a lot of golf watched the football um watched the newcastle man united game for the final of the carabao cup yeah pretty much did uh nothing else the whole day pretty much relaxed and i, I think it was needed so but yeah tomorrow back to the books back to revision for another day off but we'll be revising hard and then we've got the simulator the day after so yeah it's going to be a, a a busy day tomorrow revising but I'll see you then. So guys, welcome to day four. I'm actually currently just making some lunch and again, another day off today. I haven't really done much so far. Pretty much we went to the shops and annoyingly that's about three buses to get there and then three buses back, which is quite a long trip just for some food. Did that this morning and also had another lie in. So if any of you have been keeping count, I've done eight simulators so far. I have 17 total that are lessons. And then I have three tests at the very end. Of those 17 lessons, I have eight fixed base simulator lessons, which are the first eight, which I've currently done. And then I have nine normal full flight simulator lessons. Here in Sweden, we don't actually have a fixed flight simulator. So they've all been in a full flight simulator, which is really cool for me. But it also means that now we've pretty much done the majority of content and now as we transition onto the full flight simulator, we actually go back a step and sort of practice the basics again. But this is stuff we've already done. So there's actually not too much to revise. I'm not really doing anything new on this next simulator that I haven't done already, but I still will go over everything. There's always stuff to learn, so I can always keep reading and practicing stuff. So that's gonna be my aim for today. But again, not too heavy as a content day. Luckily, my sim isn't too late this time as the last two have been quite late. So yeah, that's the plan. I'm gonna do a little bit of revision, but again, not too heavy of content. So I'm gonna finish making my lunch and then uh, yeah, start some revision. Something new that we were doing today was a circuit, which is pretty cool. So we, I made sure I went over that in lots of detail and of course did the mass and, mass and balance and performance whilst watching some golf on the side, because yeah, why not? So guys, welcome to day five of this week in the life of a tight rating student. Unfortunately, no more days off. We got a sim later today, which I'm actually very excited about. Um, and as I explained in the last day, um, we're sort of going back a step now as we move on to the full flight simulators. But as I've been doing full flight simulators the whole time, um, I really have an advantage here. So when we're really just doing stuff we've already done, which is, and it looks really enjoyable. It looks like it's gonna be a good fun sim session today and tomorrow. So I'm really looking forward to them. But plan for today is literally just revise this morning before we head into the simulator. Briefing at 1.30 in the sim at 3 for 4 hours and then an hour debrief afterwards. So that's obviously going to take up most of the day. But yeah, just going to be revising this morning for... I'm, I, I pretty much revised everything for today's sim previously as well as yesterday. So I might do a little bit of reading ahead because sim 3... 
Um, wait, yeah, that will actually be the last day in this video, um, if my math is correct. But yeah, that simulator is low visibility procedures as well as, I think, performance-based navigation, something like that. But that looks like there's quite a lot to read for, so I'm going to do my best to read ahead for that simulator because these next two aren't too bad i'm pretty sure i know everything already so that's a really good thing but yeah a lot to learn for the last sim of this video but guys i hope you are still enjoying it so uh yeah i'm gonna go ahead to do some revision and i'll speak to you in a bit so guys quick update revision's going really well um i'm completely prepared for today's sim feeling confident about it uh still got a couple hours until we have to be in the briefing so good that i'm prepared early um yeah, just going to continue now reading ahead for the future sims. Get get ahead, get one step ahead. So that means we have less revision to do after our sim tonight. So yeah, that'll be the plan. So guys, briefing finished. As you can see, someone's currently in the simulator, but briefing's all good. This is going to be a fun flight. I already know it, so I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, soon going to jump in the sim, but yeah, I'll see you in a bit. First half of the sim done, I was pilot monitoring first, but now for a 10 minute break or so, and then my turn pilot flying. We're doing crosswind landing, so they're pretty good fun. So guys, simulator finished. There are quite a few people around, so I'm trying to be quiet and not disturb them. But uh, yeah, really good fun simulator today. Um, got to do some raw data ILSs, um, as well as some visual circuits. We haven't done a visual circuit before in a 320, so that was really cool. All went really well. We even did some crosswind takeoff and landings with 30 knots of crosswind. That's definitely a challenge, but again, nothing we couldn't handle when it was really, really good fun to try and do it in a full motion simulator as well. You could really feel the crosswind and the visual picture coming in when you're sort of looking so sideways with such a big crab angle and it, coming in that fast. It was just so cool. I mean, nothing I've really experienced before. So really good, interesting simulator. Really enjoyed today. Um, we've got quite an early simulator tomorrow. Um, briefing at 9.30 a.m., 11 a.m. start in the simulator so got to be up quite early well not too early but there's definitely no time to revise in the morning which means even though it's quite late now it's about 7 30 going to make myself some dinner have some food and then crack on with revision for tomorrow even though there's not a lot not really a lot of time just got to make the most of the evening and try to get as much revision done as possible so that's the plan for tonight get some food in revise as much as possible and then yeah get ready for the morning sim tomorrow so guys welcome back to day six now again people are sleeping so i don't want to be too loud i got the sim this morning first thing didn't really do much last night except for revise for today's sim um, but again not too much new stuff a couple new things we haven't done before but should be all okay gonna head into the briefing in about 10 15 minutes so yeah just finished getting ready did the mass and balance and performance and stuff this morning and uh, yeah, gonna head straight into the simulator first thing this morning. So guys, briefing complete. I'm pilot flying first. This is definitely gonna be a fun one. I'm really looking forward to it. Got some TCAS, wind shear, non-precision approaches, and we're doing some uh, cold weather corrections, if you know what those are. So yeah, flying in, I think, minus nine degrees or something. So yeah, gotta correct all our altitude for the non-precision approaches. But yeah, this is gonna be a good flight, so. Uh, yeah, I'll speak to you afterwards. So guys, welcome to day six, if I haven't said that already. Sim is now all finished, went really well. So in today's sim, we didn't really do anything crazy. We had a lot of fun, we did some non-precision approaches, bolt landings, which are pretty cool, which are basically like a go around almost as you're touching down or just touch down which is pretty cool as well as that we did some crosswind landings in the maximum crosswind component of the at20 uh it, that was just insane it was so hard like ridiculously hard but really good fun finished off again with some more visual circuits also did some tcas stuff so uh that's basically when two planes are on course to hit each other you have to obviously maneuver around the the other aircraft so that's we did a bit of that today as well and also a lot of wind shear stuff which is all pretty cool it was really good fun a good session today but now the last simulator is tomorrow and tomorrow is low visibility operations as well as performance-based navigation so performance-based navigation is essentially using the gps to fly um, so we're doing that as well as um, low visibility operations so that sort of stuff where you're looking at like auto lands um, when there's basically fog on the runway a lot of that tomorrow that is a lot of new stuff though so i am gonna have to be doing a lot of revision this afternoon as much as i really really want a break but yeah that's pretty much everything for today i'll see you later 
So guys, went over the new low visibility stuff and then finished up by making myself a banging omelette. Let me know your top three ingredients for an omelette in the comments below. So guys, revision completed for the night. I'm going to go to bed and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the morning for the sim. So guys, briefing in about 15 minutes, literally just got up, got ready, had some breakfast and time to head down and uh, yeah, go and uh, do this sim. Uh, low visibility operations and performance based navigation today. I'll let you know how it all goes after the sim and I'll give you a big more a bit a bit of a better debrief for the last day. Can't believe it's the last day for the video. I mean I still got loads more sims but yeah crazy. So guys simulator for today complete. We did low visibility operations and performance based navigation. To be honest majority of the sim was all performance based uh, sorry it was all low visibility procedures taking off in the absolute minimum so runway visibility on uh, on takeoff was 125 meters which I've never done anything like that. It was ridiculous ridiculously good fun um and then landing again fog on the runway so you basically can't see the runway until you're on it we have no decision height and um the runway visibility is 75 meters on landing of course you have to do an auto land in that case because you can't land if you can't see the runway and basically if, for those who don't know that's how it works essentially when the conditions get worse and worse uh, in terms of visibility uh, there's a certain threshold at which point you have to start doing an auto land instead of a manual landing but that being said then the problem with the auto land is it has certain wind limits it can't do more than a 20 knot crosswind for example so if you have a really low visibility so you need to do an auto land but you have a 25 knot crosswind you can't land at that airport so then you'd have to divert or something like that but practicing a lot of different auto lands and different failures that can come with the auto land times when you'll have to go around in the event or when you're trying to execute an auto land but the plane doesn't let you and it doesn't work out preparing for all of those scenarios hopefully i won't have any of them um, but yeah did a few of those engine fires and failures after takeoff as always uh, with low visibility operations this time again really good fun a good simulator but with that complete i do have another simulator tomorrow but of course i am only going to do a week in the life of a of a type rating student so that brings me to the end of this video i hope you guys have learned a lot about what we get up to on a type rating and uh, learn a bit more about it if you do have any questions for me of course leave them in the comments down below and i will try and answer as many of them or if you just want to say hi but guys if you did enjoy it remember to subscribe and like and if you did enjoy today's video check out this video here and it's a week in the life of a student pilot from back when i was doing my flight training as a student so if you like this one you'll definitely like that one as well but for now thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video